Hello, my name is Andrew. Welcome or welcome back to my channel. Today we're going to be discussing the most surprising books that I read in 2022. So these are of course just books that I read this year, not necessarily ones that came out this year. They're not in any particular order. I do want to just discuss the ones I don't own first so that I can make sure we don't skip them, which there is only two that I don't own. So the first one is going to be Playing Nice by Leavitt's J.P. Delaney. But this book, I just, I had no expectation. I'd never heard anybody reviewing this book. I had never seen anything about it. It's a thriller. And I feel like I follow a decent amount of people who read thrillers. So I'm surprised I've never seen anything about it, but it was something that we decided. I started a fantasy book club. It's kind of just, <laughs> The club's kind of dissolved, which is fine. We were all kind of just like, you know what, let's like read something that's not fantasy just this month. And we actually all loved this book. Like I gave this four stars and it was so like thrilling and enthralling. And I really, really love this book. It's about like this man, these two men that like, find out that their kids were switched at birth and then when they first meet they're like oh like oh, this is what like do you want and one of the kids has like a lot of health issues the other one doesn't and the one that has the health issue like the father of the one that has health issues at first comes into the picture and is like you yeah, know it's fine everything is fine like we're just gonna like have them grow up together like they'll just be friends like everything is fine but like of course as the book goes on it just becomes more and more of like wait who is really not being honest here like it was so good it was so good and I listened, I listened to an audio and I would recommend the narrator who's pretty great. Next up is going to be Every Heart of Dory by Shauna McGuire. I had heard many people discuss this book and I just didn't know where I was going to fall. But I actually loved like the writing, the humor, the characters, the discussion of other worlds in this book. It's about like people who are, at least in this first book, we're just kind of following like these wayward children or whatever is what the series is called. People that are like they come back to the real world from like these fantasy worlds and stuff and they have to like cope with it and all that and i'm very intrigued to continue the series because i really loved just like the discussions of the world and like how they had a certain virtuousness versus less virtuousness and like what each kind of different world values and stuff like it was very fascinating as far as that's concerned so like that's kind of the most exciting piece of it to me and there's like all these like fantasy characters like alice in wonderland and like jack and jill like they're all kind of part of this series so yeah and it was the first sean mcguire book that i've read so i have and i really want to she's someone i want to get she has a very long list of work but she's someone i really want to get into more so definitely that was a surprise so getting into the ones that i own we are going to start with yes <laughs> this is also a thriller it follows Jonah. I did not remember his name. He follows Jonah. He goes to New York. He's very obsessed with this man and he's like an older man and he kind of like, oh, it's so good. Like it's so good. The shifting of like power and just like structures and sit like this is such a good book, but it's like he falls in love with this man and the man like invites him into his life and he starts to like just pamper him and treat him with all these like niceties, just like giving him like this whole life of luxury and you know, as the book continues, things kind of turn around and flip and Jonah just kind of, you know, he maybe bit off more than he could chew. Like, it's so good. It's just so good. You know, it starts off with, you know, there, and he it starts off with him being in the courtroom and he's on trial because he's being asked if he was, it could be very triggering. So definitely just look at the trigger warnings for this book, but there is discussions of SA. So just know that. But as far as like a thriller, yes. Next up, we have The Final Empire, or the first book in the Mistborn Trilogy by Brandon Sanderson. Now, if you've already seen my most disappointing reads, you will know that the second and third books, for me, didn't really do as much. But this first book, I will stand by, I feel like it was, it's like 4.25, because I cannot stand Sanderson's prose. But the plot of this novel, and the characters in this novel, and the camaraderie, and the found family of just this book are so good. And I will not talk about this for too long because if you follow any other fantasy booktuber and you have any interest in the fantasy genre, you already know about Brandon Sanderson. I would be absolutely shocked if you did not know about Brandon Sanderson. That man has so many other people discussing him, talking about him, reviewing his books. He does not need my two cents. Just know that yes, I did enjoy this and I am going to probably not ever talk about Sanderson again on my channel because he has enough hype behind him. He does not need me. This book was good don't really care to read anything else by him next we have light from uncommon stars i read this because i was comparing my book taste to angela from literature science alliance with sam from thoughts on tomes and sam had put this i want to say closer to the bottom if not the bottom spot they were both reading hugo awards like the hugo novels that were i think this they were published this year so they were both reading them and then they decided to make a video ranking them 
on which ones that they enjoyed like from the least to the best and Angela had this at the top, Sam had this at the bottom. So I read this book as well as another book that probably could have gone on my most disappointing reads but I just, but Angela had this at the top, Sam had this at the bottom, I read this one and I read it's called A Master of Gin, which was the first novel in like this series that he's doing. And if you like City of Brass, I would recommend this, which is funny because I know it's blurred by S.H. Chakraborty, but I do think that if you like City of Brass, you would probably like it because it has like similar gin elements to it. And I think, I'm, I don't know, me and like gin mythology, something about it, it's crazy to me that I don't like reading about that because Aladdin is like my favorite Disney movie. But I digress. This book was definitely the preferred in terms of those two books. I thought this was way better. I thought the characters were better. I thought that the plot was better. I thought the definitely the character. So you're following Shizuka. We're following Shizuka. She has promised this demon that she's promised this demon that she's going to get him seven souls and they're all gonna go to hell, but she has to like train them to become these like musical prodigies that are just gonna be like the most, like most famous, most talented, most incredible people ever. But there's a lot of like, and so the seventh soul that she comes across is a transgender woman and just Shizuka has a lot of like, you know, ideas about what's right and how things should go and the way that, you know, what makes you famous and how to go about it. But but Katrina, the trans, the trans character, like kind of, Educates? Not educates, but she kind of just like changes Shizuka's perspective perspective on stuff. And Shizuka also happens to have a lovely female-female romance with someone who owns a donut shop, and it's just so good. It's like it's like scientific, but also fantasy because it has like you know selling your soul to this demon, and it's just so good. It's just so good. And the ending was buck wild, but like I was so into it. And yeah, I would probably read this. And this is blurred by T.J. Klune, who I also love. T.J. Klune. I have given most of his work. I think I've given everything him over. I've given him every every book I have read by T.J. Klune has been like four stars or higher. So I'm gonna start paying attention to things blurbed by T.J. Klune because this was great. Next we have Jane Eyre by Charlotte Bronte, which I also read in a vlog. And this novel is just so well written, so poetic, so beautiful, so. <sighs> I mean, I love following a character who's like shit on their luck at the beginning, but then they just like casually, not casually, they just like grow as the book goes on and just become more and more like, they just become more and more of their own person. They have more and more of their own ideas, their own perceptions. They just become so like, Jane Eyre is a fantastic character. Like she's such a well-written character and she, but even from the very beginning, even from the very beginning, she's, you know, there's just so many quotes in here about independence, about being your own person about what it means to like, oh, I don't know. It's, 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 a great, it's a great thing to have a character who's very set in themselves, but also listens to other people and also values other people's like opinions and you know, will debate with you, but still respect you. And just, I don't even, I don't know. Jane Eyre is such a, such a good character, such a good character. And I feel like your enjoyment of the book is very dependent on your connection to Jane Eyre. So if you read the first few chapters and feel like you hate Jane, DNF the book. But I am obsessed with Jane. So, man. And there's definitely some things to be said about this book in terms of stuff that's problematic. But, you know, Mara made such a good video defending this book's honor that, you know, it's like an hour and a half long video, but it's worth every minute to watch that video. Okay, next we have Vicious by V.E. Schwab. And the reason this was surprising to me is because I can't remember if I read this. I think I read this. I read A Darker Shade of Magic. I really liked Darker Shade of Magic, the first book. And then I read the second book, hated it. And then I tried to read the third book, DNF'd it. And then somewhere between those three books, I also read Addie LaRue. And I like Addie LaRue. I think Addie, Addie LaRue definitely deserves some praise. But it's, I just, again, it's just, it's... I'm not sure it warrants the praise it gets, but it is good. Now this, I feel like most people, I feel like from what I've seen, this is kind of universally acknowledged to be one of V.E. Schwab's best. Now, I don't know if this is like, it's not gonna make my top 10 of the year, but I do wanna just point out that like, this book is, in my opinion, one of her best. Like I think that if you tried the Darker Shade of Magic series, or you, maybe you tried Adelaru and you didn't like either of those, you could still like this. And even with Darker Shade of Magic, the first book, I had my issues with it, but I was kind of hoping that like as the books went on, it would get better. That was not the case for me. I thought the first book was the best, but Addie LaRue is such a good standalone. This is a good standalone. I, however, am very intrigued by what else could happen in this 
world, like in the setup of what the character's powers are and all that stuff. Like, and it felt very, it does feel very much like Professor X, Professor Xavier and Magneto's like backstory because they're villains and it's a fractured timeline and it's, it's just so good. It really is so good. And I definitely want to read the second book very soon. So, but I was just surprised because I have had such a mixed experience with V.E. Schwab, which I feel like, again, almost everyone that I follow has said that they hate some of her stuff, love some of her stuff, you know? And I guess that's just how she is as a writer, which I guess kind of shows that she has the range, if you will, I don't know. And finally, my, the last book that I want to discuss that was one of my most surprising reads is The Bear and the Nightingale. Let me tell you, this, there's one quote in this book that just sent me. Like, it was just, it's so fucking good. It's so good. This is about Vasya. She lives in the woods. She wants to live in the woods. She has this attachment to these, like, demon creatures, or at least everyone else refers to them as demon creatures, but they're very rooted in Russian mythology, and they kind of, like, protect the house and stuff, but then Christianity comes in and Christianity just is the villain. And if you don't like Christianity being the villain, maybe not, but if you want oh, this preacher man, he comes in acting like he knows everything that's going on and man, the last like 20% of this book, like it really goes into like some horrific things, but it, it's like, oh, I just, it's so good. It's so good. It's so lyrical and poetic and beautiful and so well written and just, so character driven and if you like Vossi as a character you have got to read this book like it's so fantastic like it's also very mythological folklore like all those words like yes and i'm learning that that is some shit that i adore i just adore it definitely one of my favorite reads of the year yes it was so good so that is it for my most surprising reads. Let me know if you hate any of these books, if you love any of these books, if you can't wait to read any of these books. I will leave my Instagram, Goodreads, and Twitter. It will all be in the description for you to check out if you would like. Otherwise, have a great day. Bye.